So hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making a second version of a video that I had previously made, which was a physics books that everyone must read. And that video was mostly focused towards books that are not meant for CA study or that are not used at university, but books that should be read by everyone and could be possibly read by anyone who has even the slightest interest in physics. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about textbooks in physics that are going to be helpful for you if you're into some serious studying. So, if you're in the first year of your university or if you've just finished high school and you're not actually doing a physics related course, but if you have some free time and you want to study physics, the first book that I would recommend everyone is called University Physics. Now, this is a huge book and as you can see, this single book covers everything that you have in your first year curriculum of university. So all of the subjects that are taught in your first year, including classical mechanics, thermodynamics, and even some basic quantum mechanics, it has everything in it. So yeah, University Physics by Sears and Zemensky. Look no further for your first year. And before you have, you're done with this book completely, do not go ahead because this is one of the first preliminary books that you must get get through to be able to understand the further topics in physics. Now, as we all know that physics is 90% math, there is a lot of math involved. Now, obviously at high school level, you, you, the physics that you learn till the end of high school is mostly 50% physics, 50% maths, because they teach a lot of concepts in, that, in it as well. But once you get to university, you will quickly learn that most of physics is just application of math and there's nothing much else to it. So there's this book called Mathematical Methods for Physicists. It is a complete boon for physicists and engineers in university because all the maths topics that you'd possibly need for your physics degree are in it. Everything starting from the very basics of calculus all the way until linear algebra and even a little bit of group theory is in it. But the thing with mathematical methods, it, it, it does not quite focus on the maths of it. Like it will not teach you every single theorem you need to know to just do math. And it's not a kind of a textbook that you'll enjoy reading. It's in fact a reference book. So for example, if you're doing, if you're studying physics from a textbook and you get stuck on a particular topic, you can open up that book, the mathematical methods book, and you can check whatever topic it is that you're stuck at, mathematical and you'll find some reference to it in, in, in that book. So I'd really recommend you to get that book. I don't have a physical copy of it because it is available online on the university's library. But yeah, if, you, if it's not available on your university's library, I'd suggest buying that book because it is really amazing. Now for your undergrad thermodynamics, the book called Blundell's Thermal Physics is the book that we use the most. Blundell's book is really amazing. It covers all of the topics and it really was in line with how my university course went so it was really good for that there's another thermal physics book by schroeder which is also supposed to be really good i've read a couple of chapters from that but the thing with schroeder's book is that it wasn't exactly in the way that was you know in in the order that it was being taught at my university it was a little bit different approach to thermal physics but it's supposed to be in a better language I mean, it's supposed to be more user-friendly than Blundell's, but like I did not notice a lot of difference and I'd suggest Blundell's for you. But even then, if you want to try it, Shores book, because I've met a lot of friends who, was, who did study from Shores, I'd recommend you try that book out as well. Now we keep hearing a lot about the Feynman lectures in physics. You'll obviously have heard about it somewhere. Many people talk about it quite, quite a lot. The thing of Feynman lectures is I personally love them. Like I'd... In my previous video, I had spoken about the Feynman lectures as well. But the thing with Feynman lectures is that you won't be able to pass your university level exams just studying from the Feynman lectures. Because the Feynman lectures usually does not go into a lot of mathematical detail, but in fact, it gives you an intuition that should go hand in hand with your mathematics that you're doing at university. So for example, the Feynman lectures on quantum mechanics is such a good book. But the thing is, if you just study that book, you won't be able to solve the questions related to it. So that book will help you gain your intuition. So your order should be reading the Feynman lectures on that, that topic first then going through the textbook, then going through a formal textbook for that and then you'll be able to solve the questions even better because now 
along with the mathematical foundation you also have a intuitional foundation for that very subject so after talking about final lectures i'd naturally talk to you i want to talk to you about griffith's books so the first book i'm talking about is the dj griffith's quantum mechanics the introduction to quantum mechanics now this is kind of a very controversial book 50% of people absolutely love it i mean those who love it swear by it and don't study for many other book at the undergraduate level but the other 50% absolutely hate it but what i think is that at an undergrad level this book is absolutely amazing because the 50% of people who don't like this book are people in my opinion who have already studied higher level quantum mechanics classes which involves a lot of dirac dirac notation which this book unfortunately does not use a lot because dirac notation in quantum mechanics is supposed to make the subject a little bit easier mathematically and the wave mechanics foundation which is used in this book in the entirety of this book is supposed to be more intuitional but a very very rigorously mathematical book but even then at an undergrad level you need to have a little bit of intuition after which you can move on to a mathematical or a matrix mechanics foundation which is purely based on linear algebra the next book i want to talk to you about is a modern approach to quantum mechanics by john townsend now this is a book that i'd recommend people to do after they're done with dj griffiths and after they've taken a basic course in linear algebra because this book is also an undergrad level book and it involves using the dirac notation a lot and it uses a lot of linear algebra which makes the mathematics very very much easier and the intuition that you gathered from maybe feynman's or from dj griffiths will also help you gain a little bit of a deeper understanding in the subject of quantum mechanics now i have to be completely honest with you i have not done the entirety of a modern approach to quantum mechanics but from what all i've done i absolutely love this book and as for dj griffith's book it is everything you need for your undergrad curriculum so if your university does not use a lot of dirac notation don't worry dj griffith's will have you covered now the last book that i want to talk about is DJ Griffiths Introduction to Electrodynamics Now as far as undergraduate curriculum goes this book is known to be the best ever written physics textbook and this not just for electrodynamics this is for the entire physics field in undergrad this is because the electrodynamics book by DJ Griffiths covers everything you need to know about electrodynamics and he does it in such a nice way explaining every single thing and he also like the language used in his book is like a person talking to you rather than a monotonous textbook that you would not enjoy reading so once you sit down with this book you're not going to be bothered by anything else for at least a couple of hours because it's a really fun book as well but the thing about dj griffith's books is that it involves a lot of examples and problems with it so make sure that you're doing them along while along with the subject matter that you're studying because he delegates a lot of lot of the content into the examples which if you do not do you'll miss out on so it is a must to do all the examples and all the problems that have a star on them you'll find out when you see the book because those are the important problems and those are the problems which could cover some content that wasn't covered in the content pages so that's it from my end but until now all the books that i have recommended is because i've only finished my first year and i've started studying for my second year and nothing beyond that so if you are a, a, an upper level undergraduate student or a graduate student i think that these textbooks will you might have already gone through these textbooks and as soon as i learn from new textbooks as soon as i get my own recommendations for new textbooks i'll be updating this video So until then please subscribe to my channel and keep following my videos. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I'll be back shortly with another video. Until then, 